Hello and welcome to our show Centre Spot. On today's show we'll be discussing a controversial weekend in the Premier League and looking forward to the Dylan Dennis versus Logan Paul and KSI versus Tommy Fury fights happening on October 14th. With me today to discuss all of that we have Camersley, Louis T, HFC and back again MBK. <laughs> Come on, boys. Come on, the boys. Come on, the boys. Come Come on, the boys. boys. Let's go straight into it, boys. The Premier League this weekend was pretty nuts. There was a lot of surprising results. But I think there's two teams that we haven't touched on that much that we need to touch on, that we need to appreciate. I think the first one that we need to start with is Aston Villa. 6-1 win against Brighton. None of us in our picks selected Villa to win that. We had... Few of us going for a draw, three of us going for a draw, and two for the Brighton win. You and me, HFC. But let's talk Villa, man. They're sitting fifth in the table, 15 points, three points behind Man City. Cam, what do you think about Villa? Villa look good. Villa look really good. Um, for me, I still kind of class them in that, that secondary pack, just outside the top six. Uh, you know, with, you know, maybe I'm getting a little bit too gassed up here as a Spurs fan, but with, you know, your Brightons and your Newcastles. Um, I would say that Brighton have a result like that in them. You know, take yourself back to last season. They lost 5-1 to Everton. Um, just every now and then, Brighton do like to go out and get slumped for some reason. But you've, um, but you've got to put respect on Liverpool and Newcastle being the only teams to beat yeah, Villa right now. And Newcastle. And actually, you know what? I maybe misjudged Newcastle slightly at the beginning of the season. That that result they got the first game when they, I think they put five past them. They beat them 5-1 in the first game of the season, yeah. Newcastle-Villa. What result that was. Liverpool, you know, comfortably dealt with them too. Uh, Villa are a real good team. They strengthened really well over the summer that bring in Diaby and um, yeah. sort of etc. I think Villa look good. I think, you know, it's going to be so interesting how the season plays out with top five, top six and all that type of jazz. It is. MBK, what are you saying about Moussa Diaby, mate? Because you liked the guy before, right? Of course, and of course. Ball Unreal baller. <coughs> Leverkusen, you know, he is actually so good. I can't believe he's not at United right now, to be honest. <laughs> I'll take him. Could do with him, yeah, mate. I'll do with him yeah. right now. I need him in my team. What else? Look, Ollie Watkins, Watkins yeah. three goals. And the thing is, it, it's they also have a backup striker like John Duran. He's not, Man, he's he quite good. good. Like he's very good. So yeah. I, uh, I'm, I'm literally, I and can't wait to see what they I do. I actually looked at their team on flash scores and they're missing Emmy Wendia, Tyrone Mings, and their bench still looks strong. It was like Yuri Tillemans, Dendonka, who's not had a great time at Villa, but, you know, still still fairly strong. Diego Carlos on the bench, Jacob Ramsey on the bench. So, honestly, it's a strong squad. That's that's the main point, really. Like, they're, they're looking good to be able to continue this form throughout the season. If you look at that form towards the end of last year, if Unai Emery started the season last season with Aston Villa, yeah, they would have got top four so easily, so yeah. convincingly. So, yeah. they're a real threat and someone definitely to keep an eye on. Mate, you, see, um, you see, going into the Liverpool-Villa game in 2023, Villa would be sitting second in the table after City. Wow. Under under Emery. It's Emery. not a bad stat at all. That's insane. Bad at well, he's proved himself, hasn't he, Emery, now in the Champions League and yeah. no, no, the Premier League. I mean, before, he, at Arsenal, he's yeah. a bit of a joke. Well, but he's gone to Villa and he's proved himself. It wasn't himself. the right club for him. It right? wasn't the right club for him. Our fan base is very cruel. Yeah, it's, I was, it's, I was, it's a very cool fan base. Yeah. <laughs> we don't give anyone a chance. You're about yourself. Yeah, well, we, we, didn't give him, we didn't give him a chance, and he's, and he's proved himself to be a top manager. Big and, uh Listen, after Vi after Villa, he can go anywhere. And he's yeah. also shown that Steven Gerrard is a Saudi league level manager. Yeah, yeah. Steven Gerrard's uh, no good. Steven Gerrard's no good. Yeah. I mean, to go from Let's what they were in a relegation, they were in a relegation battle when he was still there. Yeah. And for what he's done is, it's um, yeah, Arsenal. I feel like you know, I feel like he was such mis he was so misjudged at Arsenal, was he not? He wasn't it, misjudged. He was. It, it was. He did. He got very, to, he got he to did Europa very, League final. Listen, listen. It was. It was so hard for him to come in after Wenger left, and he ca he came in like at the start. He started very well. Our team actually wasn't that good. We still had you know, your Mustafis. Your, the, team, the team was poor throughout. And yeah, he, he didn't get enough time. Maybe looking at it now, like, would I take him right now? I don't even I don't know. But like, let's not forget right. that this is, the same, this is the same fan base that if it, if it were up to the fan base, Arteta would not be sat in charge of Arsenal right now. So, that's you true. know, I think if, if there's any fan base in the UK, right now. Um, if there's any fan base in the UK that's going to write off their manager, I think it might be Arsenal. He did very, he did very, no, because also everyone always attacks Arsenal. So when you got, got Emery going, good evening. When we like when, we, when, we, when we're having terrible results, and he became a meme at Arsenal, and it wasn't. Uh, maybe, maybe Arsenal's too big of a club to come, like to go straight into the Premier League and then come to mm. Arsenal. 
which mm. our fan base is massive in this country. Mm. Villa's a lot smaller. They got low. They got lower expectations. And he's Arsenal, isn't Arsenal's Arteta's first club though? Yeah, but Arteta's was like he he had a history of the club. It was a different mm. situation. Fun, Min, yeah. mm, let's ish. let's let's yeah. end on yeah, yeah. Arsenal and yeah, just yeah. appreciate <laughs> that Villa are a serious team. They're a serious contender. I think potentially for top four this year. Big time. After that Brighton result, they're going to be flying. Uh, they've not had, top they've four. not had great results in the cup. I think they lost to Everton in the Carabao Cup and then lost to Legia. Yeah, Legia Warsaw. Warsaw. Yeah, yeah, Legia yeah. Warsaw. In the uh, in the Europa. Europa Conference, yeah. but. Right, they're, they're a proper team and Ollie Watkins is looking like he's heating up a little bit. I'm going to get him in my fantasy team. Yeah, they've, got some, they've got a good run of games now as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, so, I think, uh, yeah. I think I'm over them to go top four. I think the top four, the teams in the top four right now are too strong. I, contender. I think, contender. I, I think, I think, no, they've got I think, a good squad, I, man. I think the top four will, will go away with it and Villa will definitely... Leon Bailey needs to come back. I'm with Louis. They'll, I they'll think be they're the best of the rest, Catrick. Fair enough. But Europa League, maybe. Europa League, 100%. And also top five. Top five gets your Champions League this year, if England perform well in the Top five does get your Champions League. Well, let's talk about another one of those teams that's in that conversation. Newcastle United. Louis T had some pretty strong opinions on Newcastle United and Eddie Howe or as you would prefer him to be called Eduardo Howe. Right. They've beaten Sheffield 8-0, mm. knocked out City from the Carabao Cup, and then dealt with Burnley and destroyed, destroyed PSG what in the Champions that? League 4-1. And you said that they won't win a game in the <laughs> yeah, Champions League. I did say League. that. They absolutely that. destroyed yeah. PSG. Okay. Louis okay. Thompson, what do you have to say? Are you going to apologise to the Toon Army? I'm not going to apologise because I, I, I'm still not 100% certain I'll get through the group. Okay, they won a game. It was their first first game in the Champions League in what? What was that, 20, 30 years? 20, 20 since 2003, years. Since I think. 2003. Yeah. So it's like, okay, they had the lights. They had, well, they had those those drones up there giving the the team, like the team <laughs> announcement. So the atmosphere it was, was like, amazing. The atmosphere would have been... St. James it, Park is amazing. Yeah, though. okay. So they did well. Will they get through the group? I'm still not 100% certain. Oh. I, d- I don't think they will. Lim- I don't, I, I I don't just, know. I'd just like to say is a quick one. Apparently, Lance uh, tweeted um, We're talking about Newcastle. something about the Farmers League. Right. Yeah, and obviously in relation to the fact that they took a quick three points from okay. the Gooners. But, but I'd just like to say that actually <laughs> Newcastle saved you guys to some extent because they at least gave the English League a solid reputation after that performance yesterday. Yeah, right. it's um, a valid point. It's a valid, you know, it's I, think, a, it's I think you actually owe Newcastle okay. a couple of thanks. Yeah, not, not only not, a sorry, but Louis, I also think a thanks Louis, as well. Louis, literally, like, I think you need to apologise because I'm not gonna <laughs> we're talking about a Newcastle, <laughs> you about a Newcastle down, team who had Jamal Lascelles and who played really well, Joel, by the way. Joel Linton didn't play, mm. and they literally, they Sean literally Longstar. smashed <laughs> Bayern Munich. Like, are, are we, uh, sorry, uh, Bayern Munich. Top PSG. of the league, PSG. Was like, you, you lost, I think, fifteenth place. Lost. Well, we're not talking about <laughs> Arsenal right now. We're not going to Arsenal right now. We're talking about Newcastle. Right, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not going to apologise. I'm not going to apologise. I'm going to say I got it wrong. Okay. Got well, it no wrong. apology. Yeah, got it wrong. A lot of people get a lot of things wrong. I got it wrong on that. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to apologise. But you know, let's see what let's see how they do. Let's see how they do. Okay, they won a game. I, I agree with Louis in the sense that I don't actually think it's a guarantee that they get out of their group, even yeah. after that result, yeah. because you know, Dortmund away, extremely hard place to go. They still gotta play Dortmund at home, AC Milan have still got to go to their place too. And PSG are a very good team and I could see them getting picking up results against the other. Honestly, two. mate. It's I, a super tight group and you know, a great result for Newcastle and they're definitely gonna go further in that group than I thought they would. But I wouldn't I wouldn't say it's a they guarantee. Were awful though, PSG. Yeah, awful. T- it was, it's the worst PSG of all time versus one of the best Newcastles of all time. I don't I don't think think it's the worst. The very, 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 flu- very, very fluky game in my in my view. <laughs> very fluky. The worst game of time with Marquinhos and Bappe. Fluky, fluky game. Fluky game. Fluky game. Will you at least Nothing admit yet. that Eddie Howe is a Champions League manager? He's not a Champions League manager. Man. <laughs> He's not a Champions League manager. <laughs> Mate, how do you take Newcastle from relegation zones to Champions League, beat PSG four one, and not be a Champions League manager? I want to see him win a knockout, knockout game in the Champions League before I call him a Champions League manager. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Mm. Fine. Fine. All right. Well. Big shout out to Newcastle. They're, they're, oh, they're, they, they're, they're coming for Spurs' to spot, spot in the top four. So it's going to be entertaining. That's but a thread. We've, we've, we've started on the highs in the Premier League. Those first two, Aston Villa and Newcastle. And I'd like to now go on to the lows. Don't you dare. <laughs> I'd like to go on to the lows. Manchester United oh, MBK. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> An oh, awful God. result against <laughs> Palace at Old Trafford. 1-0 to Palace, absolute banger from Anderson. And then, just to rub it in, a 3-2 loss in the Champions League, bottom in the Champions League group, against Galatasaray at Old Trafford. People just come into your home <laughs> and destroying you right now. You're just letting them walk in and rob special. you. 
breaking and entering. How <laughs> breaking and entering? And I asked Nefe this question yeah. a few weeks ago, and he waffled and said it's early. But I'd like to ask you the same question: Is Eric Ten Hag in trouble? Look, um, there are <laughs> well, two things I can <laughs> say. There are two things I can say. Look, the political answer as a Man United fan would be: It's early days. But my actual answer is: I, I don't back him. Yeah, I, I wow. quite frankly don't back him. Like, look, in all honesty, mate, everyone I know who's bald is good at what they do. <laughs> like, let's be real. Like Pep Guardiola, you have the guy from Breaking Bad. You have, you know, Les is pretty funny. You have like, <laughs> like you, the guy from Breaking Bad. You have <laughs> Professor X. Like, they're they're geniuses. <laughs> and this guy comes in. He he he. Oh my god, this guy comes in. I, I, he subs are awful. He's his choice. His choices are awful. His man management is awful. I, uh, I don't really know what to say. I don't know how I feel about him. But what I will say is, in his defence, uh, we've got some, some players who I'm not sure about anymore. A lot of United fans are not going to like this, and this is the truth. But at this moment in time, at this point in time, I cannot see... Marcus Rashford making it. Oh, I'm being, I'm being, guy, I'm being completely yeah. brutal and honest because there's two things. One, if he doesn't score, he doesn't offer anything. Uh-huh. There's nothing else that he offers but if he doesn't score. You don't turn up unless Marcus Rashford turns up. So can, he's basically your only player that dominates whether you perform well or you perform badly. Yeah. Marcus Rashford turns up, man, you play well. Marcus Rashford doesn't turn up, you play badly. Yeah, I agree. But look, he's a key player in terms of he's always starting. We need him to perform, agreed. But at this point in time, what, what, what do we say? The guy's what, 26? Yeah. The guy's 26 now. And if he doesn't score, he doesn't have a good game. Yeah. It's incredible. You look at Saka. Saka doesn't need to score to have a good game. But Marcus Rashford, he's there. He's he's pointing fingers. He gets the ball. He just stays there looking for like. Yeah, you're but you're winger. comparing world class talent in Saka there to <laughs> yeah, yeah, good so talent. You know, come let, let's <laughs> look, look, look. Like, but I think for you guys, it's it's a weird situation with Eric Ten Hag because he has actually spent a lot of money, and he has. You've had the time to really kind of change the squad, and every play he's kind of brought in hasn't been very good. What, what do you think about the De Gea Onana situation that's, too? Because I think that's starting uh, to that's look awful. so, so it's, stupid it's now. It's so dumb. It's ridiculous. It's so happening. dumb. Yeah. People, people in this day and age are like, they're, they literally, what they need in a goalkeeper is a midfielder. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I, like honestly, it's, Go it's back awful. I can't, I actually can't, but the guy doesn't know, he can't save a shot, man. No, he, so he, he's scary. positioning, it's awful. De Gea would have saved a lot of the goals that Like, see yes, fair enough, De Gea was making mistakes, but... He was keeping clean at sheets. At least he can, yeah. He won the Golden Glove and you saw him. It's a man, he's the best honest. keeper in the league, MVK. Like, Bro, I, like, I, talk I, about over Ed and Cullings, mate. It's crazy. I actually, I don't understand. It's actually unbelievable. I don't know what... Positioning for all the Galatasaray goals. The first one, Zaha's goal. Awful positioning. Yeah. yeah. The second one, I can't even remember the second goal. The penalty he gave away, yeah. he got chipped on his line and he was standing yeah, up. He was and it was like, he was literally <laughs> like this. He was standing there like this, waiting for uh, Icardi oh, to come. Oh, oh, I think it's, it's all good and well, yeah, in today's world. Everyone's saying you need your keeper to be able to play with his feet. But I think the priority has to be that your keeper can fucking keep. <laughs> so, literally. You know? if, that's the, if that's not the priority, well, as, as, it, as we've seen, Anana got brought in with his feet and, and look what's happened, mate. Uh, uh, literally. It's mate, no good. I don't, uh, De Gea, meanwhile, I've said it before, I think De Gea is an unbelievable shot stopper and yeah. he's actually been heavily disrespected in recent years. He's still a free agent. Uh, yeah. What, what is that all about? What we've done, what we did today here was awful. You like, should sign him back. Yeah. <laughs> Stop that I'll take that, him. But, but, I'll take him tomorrow. Yeah, actually, our Sunday league team actually sent him a little DM to <laughs> see what he's saying. Yeah. Our keepers are going away soon so uh, he's yet to reply but I'll, I'll keep you guys posted. <laughs> keep us but, it, but it is amazing the turnaround, isn't it, from Onana's going to be the best keeper, one of the best keepers in the world, type yeah. of thing. Oh, I think we put Onana in our when when we did the fan debate with, with Mubarak and Nifa, we put Onana yeah. in in the in the, the team. team. Yeah, but it was against Ramsdale. Based off it was against Ramsdale. Though Ramsdale's not so Ramsdale's is, not playing. Is he better than Ramsdale? Ramsdale's not playing either. Do you, do you take Ramsdale over Onana? Ramsdale's Rana? not playing either. Uh, you, you take Ramsdale. Over I don't Rana. take Ramsdale. <laughs> and he knows it. And I'll say as well, I got the Newcastle thing wrong. 
But I also said that the Man United fans will turn on Ten Hag and they'll be gone by February. And I said the Man United won't get out of the group stage. Yeah, but you said so those this. Are two, those are two calls that I've made correct. You, they won't yeah, get out of the group stage. Right, let's, and they Ten might Hag get out of the group stage. We'll we'll two games stage. In. And Ten Hag will be gone. First of all, we might still get out of the group stage. Like, relax. Mm. Let's slow down. Like, <laughs> what we're talking about here. Yeah. Secondly, Ten Hag to go. I need him gone by tomorrow. I don't yeah. mind. <laughs> Honestly, who do you bring in? I really don't mind. Anyone who can man manage. I would bring back fucking <laughs> Solskjaer, mate. Like, yeah, like, bring like, back all I'm being oh honest. God. Like, it's called, it's oh, man yeah. management. It's like, you need, yeah. and I've heard this thing as well. Like, a lot of people were um, quick to go at Jaden Sancho. But I've actually heard from Ten Hag's previous clubs, like, he doesn't know how to man manage. Man manage. He seems a bit of a dry guy, yeah. Ten Hag. He seems like he struggles to <laughs> he doesn't have, have, a, have a connection yeah. with people, yeah. to be honest. Because it just that's just yeah. from his interviews and he's stuff. Dutch, he's Dutch. He is just dry. <laughs> <laughs> have you, have you seen, um, apparently, he, uh, David Neres apparently came in with a fairly, uh, you know, like some sort of trim that Ten Hag wasn't happy with. And Ten Hag, Ten Hag made that clear, yeah. And Neres said to him, Look, you focus on your trim, I'll focus on mine. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently never Neres was whacked on the bench for the next two games. Bro, he oh, literally really? the he guy's goes, a wow, tyrant, man. Come on, man. Come on, I don't I don't even I don't know what to do, man, because you see him, yeah, we're losing the game and you know, other managers are there, you know, thinking he just stands there. Like it can never be my gaff. I'd i so him to weird, kind of man. that angry teacher at school that hates their life kind of thing. Mm. Insecure kind of as well, insecure. Vibe. Yeah, he doesn't. Yeah. He can't be questioned. If you question him, you're in trouble. That to yeah. me is a sign yeah, of insecurity. Yeah, you get detention straight. Yeah, away. he's he's a slapping detentions out left, detention. right, and centre. Yeah, yeah, which yeah, isn't no, a good sign for a gaffer, mate. It's not yeah. a good sign for a not gaffer. Not the guy. Mate. So he's he's in trouble, according to MBK. He's in trouble. We're, We're in trouble. In trouble. Yeah. There, there's there are few positives like this. You got Burnley this week. One point ahead of Chelsea. You're tenth in the league. Chelsea are eleventh, and the heat that Chelsea have kind of got yeah but maybe not so much heat because it was kind of expected but with you guys i don't feel like you've had as much heat as chelsea and you're literally one point ahead of them maybe it's after this palace loss that that heat comes but god you've been bad (laughs) really bad awful I Honestly, guess Hoyland's your only sort of Hoyland, potential yeah. positive. He does look good, actually. I like, I like Hoyland. I like Amrabat. Anyone else, I don't. Amrabat I don't know about Amrabat. Amrabat got, <laughs> like, Amrabat, I don't Amrabat. think, did himself uh, uh, any favours against Galatasaray, to be honest with you. We, we I saw say, him getting spun. What, in the, in the goal? I saw him getting spun. In the goal. Spun. That's fair enough. But, bro, the difference is, okay, he gets spun. Yeah. There's, there's still three defenders against two attackers. Come on, man. Come on, let's be real. Yeah. yeah. Everything good's well, been Hoyland or Amrabat. Anyone else? Again, going back to the Amrabat thing as well, you could argue, why is Amrabat playing left back as well? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. I mean, that doesn't help him, yeah. Big I mean, you've, you've, you, any player that goes to Man U seems to just flop. So, uh, I mean, you've, you've got to give Onana the benefit of the doubt and you've got to give Amrabat the benefit of the doubt. Casemiro's got more red cards in however many games to Man U than he did in most of his Pretty career. Pretty much ever, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, it, it, it's just a pretty horrendous situation for Man U at the moment and I think a lot of it does go down to the ownership look at a club like Brighton that don't have these big money names that just operate well and go up the table Villa operated well recently Newcastle operated well recently and they they perform well and Man U are just kind of the other end of it and Chelsea where they've been operated really poorly from the top and it affects the performances on the pitch. Yeah, so they, they've got to have a complete overhaul of the squad at oh, United. But they've, they've done it they, so many they've times. Done it. Like, they, they, they've got to, like, even like someone like it's Rashford, Bruno that, Fernandes, they, they, need, they need a go. Uh, you no, can't, they, they, mate, they're, they're, no, in that, they're in a cycle now. I, I, I don't know like if it's an overhaul. Of, I don't know if it's an overhaul. I just think some players are just not playing for the badge. I think Rashford's having issues at home that's affecting him. So look, let's see what happens and yeah. <laughs> just tough time, just tough time. I would say Bruno tough Fernandes time, is not the man you want representing your club as Capitano as well but let me not delve into details tough time for <laughs> cheers <laughs> alright let's quickly brush over Arsenal great result for Bournemouth 4-0 win uh, great result against Bournemouth yeah. 4-0 win Saka Oda Havertz gets that penalty and the Arsenal fans go wild I'm a little bit unsure about that chant about 60 million down the drain being included in the chant. It's a bit strange. But yeah. the, the, the song is a vibe. 
So, Louis, I know you really won't want to touch on Arsenal 4 0 against Bournemouth because yeah. you're a negative Nancy. So, we'll go oh. on to the poor performance <laughs> yeah. against Lens, the 2 1 in the Champions League. Mm. What are you saying about that? Okay, well, good, good result against Bournemouth. Okay, we'll take that. Len, just terrible, terrible. We've got, since the start of the season, there's been no fluidity to our game. We've got passengers like Havertz in the team being played, yeah? <laughs> you, take, you take 65 million, yeah? We spent it. Take the loss. Take it. Like, we, we made a mistake. <laughs> oh, Ted made a mistake. Accept it, put your hands up, and say, for, like, okay, it's, it is what it is. He'll be a squad player. We'll bring him on maybe, like, 10 minutes to go with 3 nil up type of thing. Don't start him. Don't start him. In the Champions League, you're starting him. The guy is so bad at everything. He slows down our play massively. Can't shoot. I've never seen anyone as bad at finishing as him. Can't pass. He's slow. He's got, he's got, he's not good at anything. He's, he's not good at anything and he starts and we're trying to win the, we're trying to do things this season. He's the only and we brought someone in who's so bad and he's a passenger <laughs> and he makes everything worse at our club. Yeah, and I it swear, really upsets me. I swear he's the only Champions League winner in your club though. Wow. Champions League winner, okay, he can, he can be. He can be a Champions League winner. Easy. Wow. What, Easy. Wow. Okay, watch, watch him, do you, do you watch Arsenal play? God <laughs> watch this guy, <laughs> watch this guy play week in, week out. He's so bad. I can't he's lie, I really want to support Havertz and I really do want to back him. But he's not wrong. I, when I watch Havertz in that left centre mid position that we're playing, left attacking mid position, you know, like FIFA from like 06, where you could only run in kind of diagonals. You didn't have yeah. that 360. You, you know, you don't have that agility. Yeah. You don't have that agility. <laughs> he looks like that kind of guy. He has no agility. He's so take, big and. That's a great analogy. Goes, yeah. It would take diagonals. ages to. When you're sprinting, you'd have to like firm. It would like curve <laughs> yeah. round yeah. and then eventually. Make it. Uh, he has just been so poor. It's shocking. And I don't really get the reasoning why we keep starting, starting him. Maybe it's because don't have a great other option there and he does work hard and Listen. he does try and defend but I would also say in that game I don't think Havertz should be the main scapegoat he's, in that game not. Raya gives away the first goal mm. with, a, with a bad pass and the second goal was just poor defending it, it, it wasn't Havertz it's not, okay. so it's I don't not, think he should be the scapegoat in that situation it's not the scapegoat we've been poor gen, like we've been poor throughout the season well, Bournemouth, like, we're, 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 okay. at, Bournemouth was the good the result good result year. good mm, Good it result. Was. I haven't seen the same fluidity as I saw last season. And when Bournemouth you was. When you got a guy like Havertz starting a centre mid and a lot of the play goes through him, we're going to struggle. Play Smith Rowe. Why isn't Smith Rowe getting, getting, getting a game? Yeah. Why isn't he getting a game? Two seasons ago, as a 20-year-old, as a 19-year-old, he scored 11 goals in the Premier League and got like seven assists. Play him. Yeah. I would why like why to is see, he being played? I would, I would like to see Smith Rowe back for sure. Could because it, he... He does just add a dynamic. He's, 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 he's got, he's an injury he's, problem. He's got an injury problem, isn't it? He's still coming back. That's the main reason. And, and you saw back. him, he missed that um, chance against Bournemouth and then was crying at the end of the game. Because yeah, it missed, was an easy yeah. chance, he should have finished it. Right. And it was devastating. I was so upset when he missed it because it was just like, oh, that was his like, moment to come back and score a goal after all these injury problems. And then it's a super easy chance just slot it away and he misses yeah. it and it, it puts it wide and it's like, oh man. And then he's crying at the end of the game. So he's clearly low on confidence, right. maybe low on match fitness, but I, I do agree. I'd prefer to see Smith Rowe on that left. You've got to start, you've got to start him. Yeah. Is Vieira injured? Vieira's Vieira been a couple of cocks. And, and also Vieira's Vieira, not really left centre mid. And Vieira's not really left centre mid. He's more of a right, right, right wing player. Yeah. Well, was he? And also Vieira, he's, he's very, he's very, I like Vieira Good more than player. Havertz. Listen, I'd play Ramsdale in centre mid over Havertz. <laughs> like, it's, honestly, it's at, that, it's at that level. But Vieira is very weak. Very slight, very weak. He gets pushed off the ball easy. Havertz has at least got presence about him. He's got presence. Yeah. But Smith Rowe, fast, strong, good at dribbling. Mm. He's better, yeah. better, at, way better at, he's low on confidence. Way better at finishing than Havertz. Not yeah. even close. And well, you don't say Havertz is low on confidence, though. Havertz, ha Havertz is There's low on There's obviously a good player yeah. there somewhere. That guy's lacking yeah. everything, man. Well, one thing that doesn't help is, uh, is Goon is like ULT, no, ridiculing no. him, putting him down. <laughs> I, I, I can't imagine that helps Havertz in the slightest. I'd actually call you out, Louis, as the cool epitome out. of Gooners uh, that, 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 that <laughs> don't help their players in the slightest, you know, like... Uh, I would say do have us a favour and give him some give him some confidence. Havertz, Havertz can't hear me. Out, Havertz you know? can't hear me talk. And when Havertz scored the penalty, all the Arsenal fans were going. Like they made, they had a song about him. So it's yeah. not like everyone's going against no, we'll Havertz. See, Everyone man. wants him to do well. There's been a lot well. of talk about. I Havertz. want him to do well. No, He's I, not going to do well. End it. I can't disagree. You are the epitome <laughs> of a reactionary Arsenal fan. Mm. 
Twitter but Gooners. I do think that Arsenal fans are kind of behind Kai Havertz. We want to see him do well, but it's just when we're watching him, he's just not doing well. Apart from this but guy. Let's 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 go on from the Gooners and let's go on to the big, big talking point of this whole weekend. Liverpool versus Spurs. Spurs come out with the win. Come on. Two one. <laughs> Spurs on fire. <laughs> they keep going under Ange. Unbeaten in the Premier League. Only unbeaten team, Premier League team in England across all competitions. It's you not, you not got Spurs. beat by. Well, you, got you only played in one no, competition. That was, 90, that was in 90 minutes. That was in 90 minutes. <laughs> Who did Arsenal lose to in the Premier League? No, only Premier League team is unbeaten in all in competitions. All competitions. They're only playing in one competition, mate. And they got, yeah, they got, and they got so knocked out of a competition. The we we, we lost some penalties in 90 minutes. We, 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 we got knocked out of a competition. We lost in 90 minutes. We lost some penalties. Let's just ignore that awful stat. Give me Pedro Corros, dude. And let's go into HFC, your view on this game with many, many controversial decisions. Obviously, one very obvious one. And one that the Premier League panel has come out with the red card to Jota saying that it was an incorrect decision as well. So how, how did you feel about this game? Of course. So yeah, today has obviously been the day that they've come out and said that Jota's second yellow wasn't a yellow. So that would match up with his first yellow also not being a yellow as well, <laughs> which would suggest that he shouldn't have been sent off. <laughs> uh, I would say that uh, that's, that's the smallest... You know, that's one... Oh yeah, it's the smallest of our problems, really. The fact that we've scored a perfectly legitimate goal <laughs> we've all heard the audio now yeah, yeah. I, I've never in my whole life of watching football and it's been a while now it's been a while I've never in my whole life stood there in front of a television convinced that there's there's darker things happening behind the scenes <laughs> you know I'd be interested to see I'd be interested to see the ref's bank balance and whether he's got any <laughs> any something from Daniel Levy because to me personally that 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 can uh, that can be the only possible explanation. Oh yeah, Spurs have very clearly it. benefited I, from a whole conspiracy of success, haven't they? Well, because you no, know, Spurs well, clearly, Daniel Levy decided to switch up his approach. It referees. wasn't working before, so he's decided. Honestly, you know what? I'm Harry, gonna start swinging the ref's little fifties out of the back of the back pocket. You know, I I would just say, cameras. Yeah, I was sat in a pub watching the game. I stood in a pub watching the game. And the goal goes in, Liverpool fans celebrate, Spurs fans are gutted. Linesman flag goes up, the whole thing's reverse. The screen, pubs full of people, the screen shows the line, the offside line, well, the onside line, and the whole thing changes again. All the Liverpool fans start celebrating, all the Spurs fans head in hands. No lines, game carries on. Everyone's... Yeah. You know, I, I've, I've personally never seen anything like it Look, in my life. It I, makes me think, where we yeah, agree as a football fan, it makes me question the point of committing my whole life to this. <laughs> you know, if, if, this is, well, if these things are going to happen in front of my eyes, what, what can possibly... And this is just me. I, I didn't go to the game. I didn't travel from Liverpool and back to go and watch this yeah. game get ruined by a ref. Who, I, I'd, I'd say across the whole of the UK, no man did his job worse than the ref of the biggest game of the weekend in the most watched league in the world, you know? Something doesn't add up there, in my opinion. No, it does add up. It was a Cavendish, mistake. Look, what do you have to say sorry, to that? I'm sorry. Look, I'm, I apologise to all Liverpool fans for your hard feelings, but you need to grow up a little bit, OK? It was, it was a mistake, OK? <laughs> Mistakes have happened consistently throughout the whole history of officiating football. You take yourself back to before VAR, right? We used to sit here and debate about offside goals that were given when they were actually onside and vice versa. Balls that cross the line, we're going to be talking about this in a little bit, right? People get hard done by Spurs, most of all of them, if anything, right? Okay, I'll give you a couple of examples now. Last season, we Trotter kicks, it, kicks, yeah? See that camera? Kicks in, <laughs> kicks Oli Skip in the head. Kicks him in the head, okay? <laughs> Ryan Mason comes out the next get after the in the match interview after oh, and says, um. Sh Leave it there, Harry. Right? Just calm it down. <laughs> calm it down on the theatrics, mate. Okay? Klopp comes out and says, after Ryan Mason complains, he goes, Ryan Mason should be concerned about other things. Right? Well, Klopp, here's my message to you. Grow up. Focus on your game. To who are you playing tonight? Lask? Is that it? In, in the league, me, mate, whoever you're playing tonight, focus on that, mate. Okay, and move on because shit happens, mate. Your game against Wolves in January in the FA Cup, you should have gone out of the FA Cup, mate. You should have gone out in that game, but it was a dodgy VAR decision. I'm sorry to Liverpool fans that they feel so hard done by, Cameras. but mistakes happen, mate. Okay, and this whole talk of replaying, and like, I was actually with you. I was with you when the statement came out, but the way that Liverpool have gone on in the past couple of days is sort of like this whole, oh, the whole world's against us. There's a conspiracy led by Daniel Levy. Are you hearing yourself, mate? <laughs> it's the most embarrassing shit I've ever heard in my life, man. Okay? Mistakes happen. Liverpool aren't the only club in the world that have had an unlucky in a football game. Okay? I'm sure, I'm sure you can think yeah. of a couple of examples. Yeah. Nani versus guys. Real Madrid. I'm sure Brentford last year. Like, these Terrible Liverpool fans, these Liverpool fans, these I, heard, I, heard, I heard someone on Redman TV earlier say it was the worst officiated game of all time. 
fucking nonsense. It's up there. <laughs> it's not. It might be up there. It's mate, a game but... deciding errors after errors. But mate, it was like a game. Quick, it was a thirtieth quickly... minute. It was a thirtieth minute. Can Harry, it was not game deciding at one. all. A couple of seasons ago, Robbo saw red at Spurs ground, and uh, this was probably about ten to fifteen minutes after Harry Kane has gone. S- Right, careering in to a <laughs> ridiculous challenge way above I think Curtis Jones, uh, Jones ironically well I think it was way above his shin pads yeah and he's gone smashing into the guy studs up and it's uh it's just a yellow card for the England captain that was an awful captain. challenge I awful remember. challenge yellow card 10-15 minutes later Robbo has been sent off for a he's gone in hard I won't lie but he's it's a, it's a challenge. It's a fair, reasonable challenge for the ball. I just think I, I, that was me just coming back at your whole, oh, maybe Spurs. Well, Jota, Jota did get, get Jota here, did mate. kick Ollie Skipping the head last year, then got, didn't get sent off, and then went and scored the winner. Okay? So we can do this back and forth thing. Okay, there isn't a... Consp- my point is here. And we've just cleared up ends, neither of Jota's ends, yellows my, my, were yellows. Yeah, but so. no, they were. They were. But they, they were. were. They were. They were. They, they, well, well, there's the one against Basuma before the, the first yellow even got shown where he blatantly chips him up. Okay, that was his warning. The second one, we put on the break. Someone He come, clips someone's leg. He falls over. Come out and said huh? they are not yellow cards. Well, then whoever's come out and said that, mate, I, well, it's just opinion at the end of the day, well, isn't it? It's opinion because the referee on the pitch thought it was a yellow, so he gave it. And since when did we have this whole sort of like sort of generalised rule of what a yellow card is. At the end of the day, there's a kind of, everyone has got an idea of what a yellow card is. It's, it's all about opinion. This is, okay? this is where, and, yeah, and yeah, sorry, offside, listen, listen, opinion, listen, lads. Offside is an opinion. Yeah, and listen, that was a mistake and, and we got lucky there. Yeah. No <laughs> doubt about it. But <laughs> shit happened. Shocking. Shit, like Brentford got Shocking. lucky against you last year, did yeah, they not? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Wolves were very unlucky against Liverpool in the FA Cup last year. Mistakes happen, right? And I'm completely with you on sorting the mistakes well, VAR, out. But when you're coming out saying replay the game or there's a conspiracy, it just lets your, it lets your case down completely. That's I'm ridiculous. sorry. It's it's a joke the way that Liverpool have gone on this. I week. Agree. The way the clock went on yesterday is embarrassing. I agree. I just be ashamed of Talking about replaying the game, that's that's awful. It's within that's, the that's laws. Awful it's not within on, the man. laws. When's it ever happened before? Come on, when was the last time? Arsenal in the FA Cup replay the game because that's because one of your players didn't understand sport like the like you know you give the goal. Back We're just a classic the, the other team. But what, how can you, how, oh, mate? I don't understand. But I don't yeah. think we disagree with, too with, much. With here. The thing is, that one issue that I've got with VAR is that the, the inexcusable side of it is that the VAR was supposed to eliminate subjectivity, and it has not done that. To see the mistake now, if before VAR, if what happened um, on the weekend happened, okay, I can just about stomach that. Yeah. But with VAR, yeah, that is my issue with that. With no, the agree. audio, with yeah. the whole, all of this was supposed to eliminate the possibility of a problem like this. And we have just witnessed another problem like that. Liverpool have lost the league in the last five, six seasons by one point, at least twice, well, twice. And, you know, when, when, you, when you witness that firsthand, a game like that, every single point matters. Are man. you telling me in the last, are you hurts, telling me in those two times, hurts. those two instances that you nearly won the league, that wasn't a dodgy decision that went your way? Maybe a red, yeah, course, another team getting a red well, no, card. Like, mate, well, the, football, gonna, mate, listen, a lot of football's about it's luck, so, It's so not, it's, it, there's a difference between being dodgy, mate, and, that, and, and them getting just, it playing wrong and yeah. not drawing the lines and, and VAR messing it up. And a that's stone not dodgy. Fine, it's not yeah, dodgy. I'm not, I it's agree. It's, it's, it, was it was a massive fuck. It was a massive fuck. It was completely a massive. Yeah. It was Can I also just mention one, what, what, one what, more what game? What do you want to happen? Uh, they need to be look. They need to be. They need to look at it in terms of like, okay, how can we improve the communications right. here? Okay, but it's like this whole talk of replay or the whole talk like, and sometimes Spurs, right? Like, Spurs actually went out and played extremely well, and that's what's really frustrated me about all of this, right? Okay, because that seems yeah, to be on the radar. You're getting dominated. You're you, you getting dominated. You relied on an own goal to win you the match when we were down to eight outfield players, and you're telling me Spurs played really. Oh, well. don't make it. Don't make it eight. Like there was three men sent off, mate. We had ten outfield players. Okay, so you can you can. Calm it down. Um, it was still a two-man. I'd also just like to say, yeah, quickly, a season or two ago, United against Brighton at the Amex, the full-time whistle was blown at two all. The full-time whistle was blown, and VAR went back to find that actually United was supposed to have a penalty. And after the full-time whistle had been blown, they brought it back. United take the penalty, and they walk away with three points with a three-two win. How on earth has that happened? And we have not gone back on our decision. So the ball went out for a throw-in about 10 seconds after play resumed. After I agree. The decision. I agree. Ha- I was stood there thinking, okay, surely they're going to come back now. And they didn't do it. That, to me, is unbelievable. Yeah. And you know, it, it's a, it comes down. It, come, it, comes, it doesn't and, even come and, down. And, to- and with that, yeah, I, I, I can't 
here. Any Spurs played well. We did. Spurs this. No. Mate, we did. it's unbelievable we did. what we witnessed. Mate, we've got, we haven't beaten you in six years. We haven't beaten you in six years. You have to remember where Spurs are coming from. Spurs are the team and you here. And you relied on that. Team. Spurs were the team here who were going to come 10th in the league. Right, okay. It's a disgrace. Okay. You went, I, I spoke to you, me and Harry spoke before the game. This guy, confidence, we an understatement, right? This guy was arrogant almost, okay? And Spurs <laughs> came up and you know what? Like, listen, everyone's going like, oh yeah, Liverpool had, were down to nine men. It's your own fault. Yeah. You got your own men sent off, man. Curtis really, Jones, I'm though, sorry, he went over the ball with ankles, mate. He went over the ball with ankles, mate, with stud showing into the guy's ankle. He nearly, if Basuma's leg's in the ground, he gets, he breaks a leg there in two places, right? Oh, and Diego man. Jota, it's two silly, it's three, four silly challenges within two minutes of each other, okay? He gives the, he gives the ref an example, right? So you got that down to nine men because of your own fault. Curtis okay? Jones was a very harsh record. Uh, can, can, can I just oh, say another thing with that? Edison Royale at Arsenal a couple of seasons ago when he kicked in stamped on Mark I tell you what the difference is, because I've, seen, I've also seen similar. the comparison with the Casemiro one from last year. And the difference is, is that Curtis Jones has not gone off his feet flying in at someone's leg. Curtis Jones has gone for the ball, slipped over the ball, and just stood on, stood on the guy's thing by accident with no real force. Whereas with Emerson Royale, he went flying into the challenge and so did Casemiro. Feet and off so the that's ground. where but the difference no, is. Being, if you go off your feet, then you're, you're out of control. Being accidentally Curtis dangerous. Jones was not being out of control. Being accidentally dangerous and purposely dangerous, you're still being dangerous. And that was dangerous play. He could have broken oh, the Sumer's no, leg. No, 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 no. Serious foul play. It was being, not serious foul play, which is It wasn't malicious. It, for a red card, when, when, when I see a red card, it has to be malicious. When Son broke that geezer's leg playing against Everton a couple of years ago and still up crying, okay? Obviously an accident. Obviously Son didn't want to break his leg. It was every every football challenge was pretty did much he, an did accident, he slide right? in okay yeah, he did slide in a lot yeah, of the yeah. problems yeah. come when the player yeah. slides in Emerson, Curtis Emerson Jones one he slide does in. not did slide, he slide, slide in at all he's yeah. literally no. gone short can I just say as well yeah one massive issue that we've got at the moment with decisions like this is that when with Curtis Jones's tackle the first thing that VAR has done is a they've slowed it down yeah. slow-mo we all know now we all know slow-mo makes the whole thing look 20 times worse. No, it looks like and a red in normal that, time and too. No, it Sorry, doesn't. And on, top of, that, yes, and on top of that, it does. even more stupid and even less contextual, yeah, is pausing the frame on the exact moment of contact. That shows yeah. nothing. That, that does not it does. Even, it shows you how his legs are broken. That does not begin to tell the story. You can't possibly judge whether a player should stay on the pitch or not based off a frozen frame that adds absolutely no context to the, to the, to the minutes before that. It's ridiculous. Boys. Ridiculous. On, on this, yeah, we're, we're, we're getting heated on referee decisions. And with that absolute shambles of a performance from the referees on uh, Saturday, I want to quiz you on your top three worst refereeing decisions of all time. I'll kick it off, yeah, with my top three. My third one in third place is going to be 2014. Take you back to 2014. Arsene Wenger's 1,000th game against Chelsea at the bridge. And Oxlade Chamberlain. What was the score on that one, Fred? Sorry. It, it was it was six nil. It was six nil. It was six nil. It was six nil. But Hazard, Hazard takes a shot and Oxlade Chamberlain makes an unbelievable save on the line. The problem was it was with his hand. The referee then comes over and shows a red card to Kieran Gibbs. And they <laughs> can't shocker. at that point overturn it. Yeah. So Kieran Gibbs gets sent off and obviously Chamberlain plays the rest of the match. It, granted, maybe not the most influential decision of all time because Arsenal lost 6-0. But still one of the biggest referee blunders of all time. My second one, RVP, Robert Van Persie against Barcelona. Take you back to 2011. Arsenal, 1-1 in the game, 55th minute, 3-2 up on aggregate. RVP breaks through from a ball, shoots, Within one second, the referee's whistle of it being offside. Referee shows him two yellows. And he gets sent off. And Arsenal end up losing the game 3-1, 4-3 on aggregate. And Arsenal are knocked out. And in the words of Robin Van Persie, it is a joke. <laughs> so that was a horrendous decision. And then my number one, genuinely, and I, I genuinely believe this, and I said it to you, Cameras, I think Liverpool versus Spurs, that offside-onside decision in my opinion, is the worst referee decision of all time because they had all the information. A guy was sitting at a screen with literally the decision in front of him of it's on side and somehow the goal hasn't been given. With every other decision that we're probably going to talk about, there's an element of 
the referee didn't have all the information. He made a mistake in that way. No one could have corrected him. With this one, the referee's made a mistake. It went to a man in a room in front of a screen and he still got it wrong, which to me is insane. It's not like Arsenal Brentford where they didn't check it. It's that he, they checked it and they still got it wrong. So those are my three. Camersley? Yeah, yeah. Um, great three, Fred, I have to say. Um, bit Guna bias there. Um, yeah, it's my opinion, mate. I've, I've, done something, I've, done, <laughs> I've done something a little bit similar on, on Spurs. But yeah, so uh, number three for me, England versus Germany, World Cup final 1966. The third goal that we scored, arguably one of the most influential goals in English football history. Did it cross the line? Came down to the referee. I just thought I'd throw it out there, show that I'm not completely biased. Because my next two, it's got to be starting off with um, Liverpool versus Wolves in January 2023, FA Cup. Very similar circumstances to what happened with Spurs and Liverpool on the weekend. Did they the, have the camera angle though? Well, yeah, but you know, it's 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 not beyond the wit of man to, to figure out what's on the side and what's offside. Like I'm sorry, um, <laughs> okay. they that that you know. Did he have all the and, information and I think he needed to I, make I'm, the decision? I'm pretty I'm pre I'm pretty sure I saw um, no. Well, you know what. I could have made the decision and they were able to work out that goal was on side. So the, there was the ability there to make that decision. I'm pretty sure Van Dyke came out after the game and said, who cares? So that would be my response <laughs> to Harry about his feelings towards things right now. Um, and then number one for me, the worst refereeing decision of all time. And it's another Liverpool one, I'm sorry to say. Suzoko in the Champions League final 2019. <laughs> <laughs> all hits. Oh, look, I'm actually, look, you can go Google it right now. Freddie, put a photo up for me, mate, yeah? Ball hits here. I'll put the other okay? photo up as well. Though, yeah, put all the I've photos seen. you want to up, mate. Yeah. Put this one I'm talking about right now. Because the ball hits here, right? Okay, it is here. never, ever. It's not, mate. It's and it never, ever. And it up here in the middle yeah. of the box. Yeah, if your hand's <laughs> fine, if your hand's here and the ball hits here, it hits your upper chest, right? It's not a handball, it's your chest ball. If I've anything, seen right? that photo, though, Cam. And there is another photo of where it rolls down and then right, it hits put, let's, like, I need, mate, so we'll I might not have seen up. that photo. I'll okay, there might be up. multiple photos out there. <laughs> but the photos that I've seen are me remembering the game. Okay, for also remember, 45 seconds in, 45 seconds in. It's not like, you know, it's been a tight game, Liverpool all over us. You're 45 seconds in. You, and it's like, if it hits him here, I get it. But it's hit him here. It's, um, honestly, I'll never get over it. And fuck Liverpool. Okay, Thank fine. You. MBK, good three. First one, I'll go with England against Germany in the World Cup. Uh, 2010, yeah. the Lampard goal. Ooh. That is <laughs> no, that's some awful, awful criminal decision. Like how over. how are you getting that wrong? That yeah. that that would have put England in poor position to actually win that game. It's yeah. and who knows what would have happened. Did get know, smoked going, after that, but yeah. <laughs> did get True, smoked but, after that. But, but yeah, a goal it would have been a massive goal. I think it would have been one 0 no? Literally, two all. Yeah, you started drawing. Matt Woodson as well. Yeah, with the header, great shout. You. It's it's nah that was that was some awful awful refereeing. Yeah. The second one I want to go for is I'd actually go for Wolves Man United this season. Yeah. That, <laughs> that wow, was some dodgy. Team, I like it. That was some dodgy dodgy yeah. stuff. I can't. Another should be like, for assault. Literally, mate. As soon as it happened, I was like, yeah, we've we've dropped points here, and the ref goes back check over so like, what's going on here <laughs> yeah. fair enough I, I, i'll take that any day of the week yeah and my last one would be real madrid man united i don't know if any of you watched okay. that game where Luis nanny was looking to control the ball he has no idea where the man is he yeah. controls the ball and obviously the man runs like that into him yeah and the ref goes red card yeah yeah, yeah, we, yeah. we were dominating dominating that game at that point in time champions league football and wasn't that yeah. so alex's final game a champions league game sorry Possibly final, final season. Possibly, yeah. I think it was, uh, yeah, it was around that time, that kind of time. But yeah, awful decision is what it is. Though. Not good. HFC. So I'm gonna breeze <laughs> over the obviously one of my inclusions, which is uh, Saturday's performance. Is that is that no, is that your number we don't one? Need to delve that, into that wh too where much. do you put that in your? Uh, uh, if rankings. I'm ordering it, I think I'm I'm gonna have to give that number one. Maybe yeah. it's because it's the wounds are still fresh. But um, it, it, yeah, it hurts, it hurts. And, uh, and it, it makes me question a lot of things. Yeah. But we won't go into that anymore. <laughs> Aside from that, uh, I think second place, I'm gonna go, second place obviously from a Liverpool perspective is actually two seasons ago, business end of the season, City away at, the Good at Goodison Park. And it's dying embers of the game, it's late on. And Rodri is facing his own goal, slightly to the side, facing the goal line. He's got no one near him at all. And he brings the ball down, clearly 
with his arm that is sticking out to the right hand oh, side. It's yeah. touched him here around the sort of the bicep region so clearly. He's even lent a little bit into it. <laughs> Ultimately, he's completely misjudged the situation, yeah? And he's got no pressure. There's no excuse. The ball struck his arm. And immediately after the ball struck his arm, he's cleared it from danger. Yeah. And somehow, somehow, the penalty's not been given. City walk away with all three points. And they win the league by one point against us. 93 points to 92. You know, that's, uh, it's still hard to, it's a hard pill to swallow even yeah. today. Uh, that's fair. And I think if anyone wants to go and have a look at those highlights, you'll all see for yourselves that I'm not, uh, I'm not just some deluded, biased Liverpool fan. Yeah. And finally, going, uh, rolling back the years a little bit, back to when the game was at its most beautiful. <laughs> Barcelona away at the bridge, Pep in the dugout. Oh, what game? Yellow what? kit, oh, yellow man. Barca kit. Oh. It's a disgrace. <laughs> it is. Uh, a disgrace. The whole game, you know, to, to name one decision is not possible. The game was jam packed yeah. full of terrible decisions. Uh, the looking handball at, is the number one in that where Balak chases the referee. Down I know, the I know, pitch. I know. And, and also so, looking yeah. at, uh, I'm, I'm, apparently, I've heard a couple of things that they're looking into Barca at the moment for paying off refs apparently there's a yeah. there's an investigation underway as really? we speak yeah, yeah yeah well that would make sense because rvp and then the chelsea you know there well. maybe these things are all all linked but yeah. um but of course the game then rounded off was rounded off by an unbelievable iniesta strike on the edge of the yeah. box yeah which sent um the whole boss uh, cr uh camp into bedlam and drogba into bedlam drogba <laughs> was an <laughs> unhappy <laughs> drogba yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that game though like it, it's unbelievable the amount of bad decisions that took place yeah. it looks like because i'm it's like a compilation. Yeah. It looks like it's taken place over like 10 years. There's been yeah, that, yeah. that many bad decisions. Yeah. It, it's like <laughs> unbelievable. It's but it's again, at that point, you see that and you, you, you struggle to find an, a different explanation to the dark arts behind the scenes, man. Well, like, well, honestly, well, that, that, I, I hate, I'm not a conspiracy guy. No, I true. love football more like than what? anything, yeah. I really hate when people start to suggest that that could be a thing. Well, wait a second. But Boston, Boston you see games like that and you, yeah. it's hard. It's hard to not, yeah. it's hard to think, is the ref really that, is the ref who's being paid to ref one of the most important games of the season really this terrible at his job or is there something else going on? Well, well Barcelona are under investigation right now of for course. match fixing. So of course. Match exactly. Day, so, as we, yeah, you know, so, you know, they might get bad for the Champions League next season by the way for because they've been you know they've yeah. been paying the reps dodgy club mate yeah. dodgy club dodgy club Louis T give me your three I've got for two quite famous ones which is of, which is um, the hand of God obviously oh. Maradona it's got to yeah. be in there it has yeah, to be in there Maradona hand, hand of God, God. handballs at schools they can get knocked out yeah. and then um, Ireland Thierry Henry controlled, oh. controlled with his hand oh, another then, mental then, then slotted it and uh, yes broke Irish hearts and then my one that's dear to me is Brentford last season. Arsenal. Which Arsenal, yeah. Arsenal versus Brentford last season. Obviously, we're in a title race. First title race we've been in in 20 years. Yeah. Di like last, <laughs> last six, seven games of the season. We're in it. Five points clear. You know, we dropped points getting Brentford at home because um, the referee forgot to draw the lines and VAR forgot to draw the lines. It was an absolute yeah. disgrace. And, yeah. like, and like Klopp, I would have replayed that game too. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Honestly, yeah. there's, there's a game for that. Yeah. It is when a decision like that happens and you're in a, a big game that means a lot. Like that Brentford game didn't mean a massive amount to us. The fact that we dropped two points there and we're ahead of City and we get those extra two points could have meant a lot. Didn't in the end, but could have meant a lot. And like with this Liverpool Spurs game, you never know how mm. that game is going to end up at the end of the season yeah. with how points turn out. Sorry, if, for, sorry, Freddie. Oh, sorry, oh just to cut in there because I just thought about something. Do you think it makes? Do you think it makes sense to play the game again, or do you think it makes sense to more or less have a remark and yeah. give? that decision is so hard man do you see the difference then you can't, I then do you see what I'm going to say because you just, go, you just say two all exactly or you say replay the game I, 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 I don't think you can say two all I think it actually you if you're going to do either, either I think you, you, can't you say have either. to replay the whole thing you can't replay yeah. the whole thing it's no, like it's crazy, crazy though. Though. yeah but uh, then you're giving let's say the Curtis Jones card we all agreed was a red card let's let's say that we all agreed on that yeah even though we don't then you're then 
Where do you draw the line? Where do you draw the line? Where do you draw the line? I'm not. I'm not. Where do you draw? Because also that means that means that, that's now Spurs who have like, no, for, who've done nothing wrong on their part now to go play another game, right? Yeah. Okay. It's it's it's, it's your opening. Like it's not like you've got a busy can, schedule, mate. Yeah, you've got no big weekends. You're opening up a can of worms here, right? Okay. Because now if you do this one time, yeah, I bet you Klopp in about two years will have to replay a game that he's fucking pissed off about. Okay, it's look. You got unlucky. There's not a conspiracy against you. I get where you're, I get where the anger's coming from. There needs to be a serious sort of look at and on, on you know the whole VAR situation. Yeah. But you know, it's the whole replaying thing. Honestly, winds me up. Yeah. So much. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It's, it's, oh, all right. It's a bad argument. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel and look at the rest of our channel. Come on, join the boys. Join the centre spot. Let's go. All right, boys. Let's go into the centre spot roundup. Europe win the Ryder Cup against USA. 16.5 to 11.5. Massive, massive, massive win. Angie J, our golfy correspondent, called it pretty well. He called that Tommy Fleetwood was going to win it for the Europe. So, huge stuff. Buffalo Bills smashed the Miami Dolphins. Buffalo Bills are playing in London this weekend against the Jacksonville Jags. My team to win the NFL. So, Good let's luck. go. Super Bowl. England versus New Zealand. Cricket World Cup. First game. New Zealand absolutely smoked England. One by nine wickets, not a good situation for England, but all still to play for. They can oh, come back from that, get the top four, and then play again in the semi-finals. Ireland versus Scotland this weekend, Saturday, 8 p.m. And the Gallagher Premiership starts next Friday. The rugby, let's go. Cameras Lee, do you have anything to add to that? Couple of things, Fred. Um, big, big week in regard to determining where the next two sort of international tournaments will be held. So obviously 2024 will be in Germany, the Euros, 2026, Mexico, USA and Canada. 2028, the last horse in the race is the UK and Ireland bid. So that, you know, without any sort of catastrophes taking place should mean that we get a home tournament, which would be, be very exciting. Home. All home nations coming in to kind of help out with that one. So the atmosphere will just be unbelievable. Yeah. And then 2030, FIFA come out with yet another madness. You know, we, lo we, we know these guys love messing up at World Cups if they can. And I feel like they might have done that here a little bit. They've, um, for 2030, uh, the main host will be Spain, Portugal and Morocco. So, of course, two continents. But they've added a third by um, letting Argentina, Paraguay and um, Uruguay host their first three games. Um, so that means you'll have um, two seasons, three continents, um, an ocean in the middle of the World Cup, because obviously in South America <laughs> it's winter when it's our summer. So you'll be going from eight degrees in Uruguay to 35 degrees in Morocco. You know, it's, it, it just seems a bit, you know, I get what they're doing with the whole 2030 thing. But if you want to have a centenary World Cup hosted in South America, just give it to South America. But now it's all been set up so that Saudi Arabia can get the 20, 2034 World Cup. Yeah. Um, and it just all Did smells a little bit too Did you see that post from Stephen Gerald on his Instagram? Instagram. What did he say? He basically no, just promoted being like shamelessly. This is shamelessly yeah. promoted Saudi Arabia World Cup for 2034. Says a lot so about the guy. Let me obviously just crazy, crazy stuff, Stevie <laughs> G. <laughs> Stevie G. All right, well that's set us for roundup. Let's go on to the fights happening October 14th. Dylan Dennis versus Logan Paul and KSI versus Tommy Fury. The YouTuber boxing scene has never been bigger. This is huge, I guess, for it. Louis T, what are you saying about it? It's a huge event. It's probably the biggest event in boxing this year. Yeah, um, Unbelievable uh, undercard. Eh? So the undercard's fantastic if you're like a YouTube boxing fan. Don't yeah. Like. But yeah, it's really exciting. Um, obviously, you've got Dylan Dennis, Logan Paul. A lot of a lot of beef there. Obviously, we've seen what's been going on with Nina Rigdal and um, Dylan Dennis posting all her ex-partners and that kind of stuff. You know, There's beef in the courtroom and in the ring. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's, he's, he's actually being sued for it. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's Dylan Dallas is a jujitsu guy. His his striking is shockingly bad. All the fights he had, I think he's had three fights, three fights in Bellator, and he was his striking's just. I mean, I mean, you saw what happened to Ben Askren with Jake Paul. Ben yeah. Askren, who was a wrestler, UFC wrestler, but striking terrible, he got knocked out in a round versus Jake Paul. You'd be surprised if that didn't happen here. The odds on this are Logan 1.19 to win, Dylan Dennis 3.7 to right. win. So right. that supports yeah. Yeah. the argument that in a boxing ring yeah. he doesn't have yeah. much chance I'd like to see Dylan Dallas win because yeah. he's an underdog he's not he doesn't have a, he does, obviously Logan Paul's got so much money Dylan Dallas doesn't really have anything he's getting paid he has to actually he, actually, he, has, to he has to pay he has to turn up to win though doesn't he, he? Has to turn up to, he has to pay Bellator to actually fight I think it's 100k or something like that because really? he's, he's signed to Bellator so he has to pay them and listen I'd love to see Dylan Dallas win 
Just I think, I think it'd be hysterical, especially after calling his wife a, like a slut for the last <laughs> couple, like, <laughs> couple months. It'd be like just to rub, like, rub salt on the wound and knock him out. Yeah. It's not going to happen. Logan Paul's probably going to knock him out, yeah. which is a shame. I think I'd but, probably prefer Logan there's Paul. There's also, I mean, win. no, I, I'm not, to be honest with you, I'm not the biggest fan of either of them. I think they've both got, kind of got questionable past. Um, but with Dylan Dennis, they've actually gone as far to insert um, a hundred grand fine in his contract if he doesn't turn up on the day. Um, so they'll get, he'll have to pay a hundred grand to the uh, to the event if, in case he doesn't turn up. He that's will a, turn up. That's, well, you know what? It wouldn't surprise me if he doesn't. He will. I think he's done pretty well in terms of like marking himself. Uh, hopefully he does, because I really want to see it. Yeah. They've also got Hassim Rackman Jr. lined up as a replacement who um, he's ready to go on the night. If was it? Last I, I thought out. it was on my Perry. Oh, it might, sorry, I I might, it's sorry, Mike, sorry, it's Mike yeah, you are right, sorry, it's Mike sorry, Perry. it's Mike Perry. And yeah, I'll yeah. tell you what, Mike Perry will knock Logan Paul out, so yeah, really? he doesn't want that to happen. So Mike, Mike, Mike Perry is a, Mike Perry's a bare, bare knuckle world champion, and is a serious brawler, good boxer, and yeah. if he get, if he, that's what, that's like, if Dylan Dallas doesn't show up, you know, you're in for a real fight, Yeah. but if Dylan Dallas does, obviously it's great for views and numbers, and but I think Logan Paul will knock What's him out. What's your prediction for the fight, though? How many rounds? I think Logan Paul probably knock him out in the first round. Really? Ooh, yeah. First? Really? Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, uh, Dylan Dan- six Dylan- rounds. I think it's six. I think it's six yeah. But Dylan yeah. Dallas is shot. Is n- he's I reckon, got, he's I reckon got nothing. Logan Logan gets a bit nervy on the big stage, especially in these boxing fights. I reckon. Yeah. The, I reckon he'll win though. I'll do it in five. It's mine. It's my tip. Okay. All right. Yeah. Tell me about KSI Tommy Fury. KSI Tommy Fury. Obviously, you'd be surprised if KSI got the win. I really want KSI to lose. I think KSI is an arrogant. He, he's so arrogant it does my <laughs> head in. He's so he, he's like delusional arrogant, and um. Yeah, I, Tommy Tommy Fury beat Jake Paul quite convincingly. Yeah, he got knocked down. he got knocked down. KSI is not as good as Jake Paul. KSI split fights, decision. He fights like an idiot. He fights like a clown. He's like jumping in and out and stuff like that. <laughs> he, he he looks stupid when he does it. Yeah, he's so arrogant. He's like saying there's no way. I, Jake Paul was at least like saying, oh yeah, this is the toughest this toughest match I've had. KSI is looking. KSI is looking at him like he's so cringy. Yeah. I used to love KSI when I was like 12 years old and I used to watch a 16 year old like playing FIFA and that and I used to find yeah. it I used to find it hysterical yeah. but he's, he's still that 16, 17 year old yeah. now yeah. just talking shit as a 30 like year old talking yeah. about he's going to yeah. knock, knock out boxers and stuff he just sounds stupid the odds on this one yeah. are a little bit more favourable towards KSI than it is to Dylan Dennis it's 1.26 for Tommy Fury to win and 3.1 for KSI to win I, yeah. I think what works so, in KSI's yeah. favour here um, and look I get what you're saying with the arrogance he's so cringe like I've really struggled to watch the face to faces of the press conferences because he's got a line like, I am the nightmare, KSI. And every time he does that, I just, I want to like, kind of like escape from my body and leave a room somewhere because <laughs> it's just too much for me. Um, but you know, he's my guy. I've been Selling watching this guy for though. years and I'm backing him. And like Tommy Fury, <laughs> like he is coming into this. Like he's some sort of pro massive Donny who's knocking everyone le- left, right and centre. Like his record, the record of his opponents, don't they have like 300 Yeah, well, Tommy Fury is like no that. good. Listen, yeah. Tommy Fury is no good either. Tommy Fury, just, Tommy Fury wouldn't win an English title. He wouldn't win an English so, title. Well, I would just find it so funny if, you know, boxing's pre- premier family, you know, one of them got knocked out by a YouTuber. Oh, yeah. And that YouTuber being KSI, who's my guy who I've watched since I was a kid. He'd, he'd get know? disowned. Honestly, by the That's Fury. I know, yeah. and I'd love to see that, mate. I'd love to see that because he's an—he's ar- also an arrogant little prick too. You can't tell me KSI's he's arrogant. arrogant. He's not Tommy arrogant. Fury he's not arrogant. arrogant. He's responding to someone who's ar- he's responding to someone who's being delusional. Hey, he's, he's coming he's, out. He's, 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 he's coming out saying, "I want to be a pro boxer. I want to do big things in the industry." And he's fighting YouTubers, mate. Yeah, that, he knows that's yeah, his level, it's, and it's, he's it's, pretending like he's okay. doing them a favour. That, in my that, in my opinion, is embarrassing. I'm sorry. It is nonsense what he's saying there. He's never going to be a. He's, ne- he's not a serious pro boxer. But he's making money fighting these YouTubers. No, fair, and and, yeah, and Tommy Fury is someone Good who has money. been. He, he does the best money he'll ever make. Yeah, 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 yeah. But he he has been an amateur. He has been he has been he's grown up in a fighting family. He's obviously boxed far long. He's been boxing since he was a child. And he's got this guy KSI who was a YouTuber playing FIFA when he was seventeen years old, <laughs> saying that he's going to knock him out. It yeah. he's responding to delusional arrogance. Yeah, that that that's yeah, what's yeah, happening yeah. here. Yeah, and what that's round? What, what round? I would love, I would love for Tommy to come and knock him out really quickly. Yeah, it would but be fun, I, yeah. I, I, I'd find it so funny. But do you not I, think I'd he'll kind of chill out a little bit at the beginning, <laughs> and just huh? let like feel his way and maybe get the fight going a little bit? Possibly, because because KSI is such a strange, strange guy. He's so awkward, <laughs> and he's like, yeah. and he does, he does do that jolty stuff in the ring. Yeah, like you, yeah. maybe it would take like a round for Tommy to figure out. But I yeah. feel like. When KSI has been fighting bums, he's been fighting like yeah, he, yeah. he he fought Logan Paul, who Logan Paul's not that good, and Logan Paul dropped him pretty hard. You would think that if Tommy Fury Tommy Fury is a lot bigger yeah. than KSI, 
And when if the Tommy, I would love for Tommy Fury to just hit it with a stiff jab in the first round. <laughs> KSI is like, my God, I've never, I've never experienced anything like this before. <laughs> but and he panics Tom, and, Tommy, and then, and get, then he gets Tommy Fury out. ever knocked out? He didn't knock, like he actually got knocked down by Jake Paul. He, yeah, he didn't knock down Jake he Paul. He dominated the fight. Out. He's a technical fighter, and that's why my prediction is actually KSI to win it in the second fly <laughs> knockout. Right? <laughs> okay. Right. And um, because KSI, KSI's got three rounds to win this fight. The first three rounds, when it's a bit unknown, KSI's got a really good gas tank too. You've mm. seen that in all his fights before. He's, he's been the person that goes on a little bit longer. And I don't think Tommy Fury's really been tested in a way where he'll have as much eyes on him. <laughs> huh? No, honestly, in terms of the spotlight on him, the whole country will... It's, it, mate, this is probably the biggest event he's ever been on. Without, yeah, without yeah, a doubt, is. it's the biggest event he's ever been Jay on. Paul was last fight in Jake Paul. But that was in, that was in Saudi Arabia. Paul, yeah. like, in terms of, you know, his, he's fighting in his hometown, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. Like, the pressure's on him here. And I feel like, you know what, listen, maybe it's a bit of delusion here. Well, it's a tough one, well, but I'm back in KSI in the second. On, on the KSI <laughs> bridge, let's, yeah. let's go away from boxing on, yeah. and go back into football. And let's go on to our picks update. So, I've got a new leader table of... Who's winning based on picks last week? HFC, this was your first week in picks, actually. It was, yeah. And I will say you came second. So everyone at the top were me and Angus with five correct predictions out of ten. And you were second with everyone else on four. You were the only one to call a draw with Wolves and Man City, which obviously didn't happen because City actually lost to Wolves. But you were the only one to call us out on that and say that potentially that could be a dodgy result. And you were also the only one to go for a draw in Man U versus Palace which obviously Palace ended up winning and everyone else went Man U to win. So you actually had two along the right lines. I think basically I was was being a little bit conservative whilst also having a lot of confidence in Wolves and Palace to nick points. Yeah. I consider Wolves one of three big bogey teams for City on the recent teams along with Palace and Spurs. Yeah. Um, And uh, hold on there, cameras. (laughs) Uh, so yeah, along with along with uh, Palace and Spurs, I think Wolves are a big time. Adama brace at the Etihad a couple of seasons ago yeah. springs to mind immediately. Yeah. Uh, I think Pedro Neto has been unbelievable this season Oof. so far. Yeah. He's a serious player, serious player. Yeah. And yeah, similar in similar fashion, Palace are no fools. United are in the mud at the moment. <laughs> I, I I saw points for Palace, <laughs> yeah. and uh, I'm glad they they nicked yeah. uh, the three points. It's surprising they, they went for that deserving. after they beat them. 3-0 in the Carabao Cup that week but it was a decent call it wasn't correct but no, no. you were correct that United were going to drop points and effort, that's, that's a fair shout Thank you, the rest of them were everyone called Arsenal to win everyone called Newcastle to win everyone called West Ham to win and then pretty much everyone except for Angus called Brentford uh, Brentford and Nottingham Forest a draw he called Brentford to win and the only person to actually call the Tottenham Hotspur win was Angus so he well, made one angle. back there. That was a that was a big call from him. He's and finally then, off zero percent. Huh? He's yeah, finally he's finally off zero percent. Me and Angus were the only two guys to predict the Chelsea win, which is where we went above you Fair guys. Um, everyone else went Fulham and Fulham and draw. So the rankings are still in last place. Angus Jones with thirty one percent. Louis T thirty four percent. MBK thirty nine percent. Leslie Wife, 42%. Nife Bali, 43%. Bonza, 44%. And the top two, Cameron's Lee on 44%. Ten. And Freddie Walker on 52%. You're above 50%? Yeah. That's impressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's good work. You're actually on 48%, Cam. I got that wrong. Did he call oh, 48 nah. Yeah, oh, you're actually nice. on 40, you 48%. Nah. Wow. So you're getting towards the 50% I'm taking the dog. So it's one, the host man. Oh, you might be. I just get these predictions yeah. right. But let's go on to this week's predictions picks week eight Luton versus Spurs 12.30 p.m. Comedy Spurs easy win for the boys I'll I'll ask the question is it everyone Spurs all round yes I'm gonna go for a draw Mm, sadly I'm tempted by that Spurs should probably win Luton will be happy after their first uh, first dub of the of the campaign but I don't think that them or Kenilworth Road will be up to the task yeah so all Spurs Spurs and a draw Okay, next one. Burnley versus Chelsea, 3 p.m. Chelsea for me. At Turf Moor? At Turf Moor. Oh, I'm going to go with a draw. Draw. I like a draw. Draw. I'm going to go Chelsea win. I'm going to go Chelsea win. But I am tempted by that draw shot. I like the draw. It's a good little draw shot, that. It's not a bad draw shot. It is good. Everton versus Bournemouth at Goodison. This is actually quite... 
big one for the bottom of the table. Massive game. Yeah. I HFC, what are you saying? I, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually back my Merseyside rivals and uh, and give Everton the shout there. Oh, I'm gonna back Everton as well. Cam's left. Good to see an option of the task. I think we're a draw. I'm gonna go with Everton win actually. Everton win. Yeah. Nice. Everton win as well. Ooh, so Cameron Lee sitting on the fence there. It's the only one. Wow, it's a boom of not getting a single pick there. Could be could be a bad decision that. <laughs> Fulham versus Sheffield United, 3 p.m. I'm gonna go Fulham. Cameron Lee. Oh, it's a Fulham or draw, and I just that performance against Chelsea the other day was a bit disappointing. I'm gonna go for a draw on that one. But it's at Fulham. You went for Fulham to beat Chelsea last yeah. week. I was disappointed. <laughs> I'm going for it. And also, I think Sheffield okay. United have a bit of... They've got something to say about the past few results. And okay. I was quite impressed with them when they Just played Just because they turned up against Spurs, okay? <laughs> but I can't they see, always do. But I can't see Sheffield United doing much. I, Fulham win. Fulham win. I think Fulham win. We're going for a draw as well. Draw yeah. as well. Wow. Okay. Man U versus Brentford, 3pm. Is everyone going Brentford? <laughs> <laughs> this is a tough one, actually. Who's at home? It's Old Trafford. Trafford. It's at Old Trafford, but that means, that means nothing, nothing these days, mate. <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> that means absolutely I, nothing. I'm going to go for a Man United win simply because they can't lose three games in a row, right? Like, they can't. Yeah, they definitely can't. Can. Could, though. When was the last time we got to find that one out? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what, was, it, was it at Old Trafford that you lost 4-0 or was it at their ground? It was at theirs. It was, was at their it ground. Was, yeah, community oh. stadium. The green um, kit. Uh, I'm going to go Man United win, only just. <laughs> <laughs> only just, but I think we'll scrape the win. As you say. I, 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 I'm, I'm not just saying this uh, from a, like a spiteful against United <laughs> perspective, but I actually think Brentford are going to turn up and take three points. Yep, I agree. Brentford win. And Buemo to score See, at I've, least once I've as well. I've gone Man U so many weeks thinking they can't just keep being rubbish. Mm. A bit like Chelsea. Mm. And it worked for me last week with Chelsea going for them. I think I'm going to go draw on this yeah. one. I think draw seems sensible. Palace versus Forest, 5.30pm. I don't know why that's the 5.30. I would have much preferred to have seen Manny versus Brentford. But 5.30, Palace versus Forest, Camersley. I'm going for Palace. Palace, okay. I think Nottingham Forest are going to edge it. 2-2 cool. two, two draw. You've heard it here two, first. Two, Ooh, Desmond. There we go. i go for draw Correct as well. Score. Draw. Draw as well. Desmond. Uh, I will go Forest. I'll go Forest. I think Forest might nick one here. Yeah. Big up Forest, mate. I've got yeah, for big up Forest. Brighton versus Liverpool, 2 p.m. Big game of the weekend. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a big one Ooh. other than one other At the massive Amex. one. At the Amex, yeah. For me, I'm going to go, I think Liverpool will still be a little bit salty from last week, so I'll go for a draw. A draw? A draw. And Brighton have something to prove, too, from last yeah. week, too. So. Can't lie, since we started this podcast, as in today, my mind has changed like twice. Brighton were losing when I when we walked in, they drew the game away. <sighs> they lost, they just lost, they just come back on the defeat to what, Aston Villa. Yeah. <sighs> AK Athens as well. Yeah. Lost and to Liverpool, Liverpool, they need this win, so uh, it has to be Liverpool win. HFC. Uh, Liverpool uh, uh, batter, saying, yeah. actually. I'm confident to change that. that we are going to respond uh, with due diligence. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that we'll be back to business. Yeah. And I think we'll turn up to the Amex and we'll take a rightly deserved three points that we should have walked away with the week previously, but life doesn't work like that, sadly. Things, things don't happen mm -hmm. like that all the time, yeah. Louis T. I think Liverpool are going to be rattled. I think Klopp's rattled. And, Big um, time. I think, Brad, I think Brighton will win. Oof. Okay. Let's, let, let's not forget uh, who's at the bottom of the table in terms of predictions over here. I think Brighton will win. I think... Uh, Start, that's when I jump up. I think, uh, <laughs> I think Liverpool win that. They come out firing in that so. game. Like, they're going to be so angry. West Ham versus Newcastle, 2pm. Also, another good game. Great, Big game. Great game. Yeah, I'm going to go Newcastle in this. At West Ham, Louis T, what are you saying? Um, at West Ham, I'm going to go for a draw. Okay. I think that it would be the most typical thing ever after all these years of us watching football for Newcastle to do what they did yesterday, which was amazing, amazing yeah. to do what they did. But the, the steam runs out. Uh, it doesn't last the full week. And I think that they might actually lose on Saturday, on Sunday. There was a come down after he picked it up. There's always a come down. It, it, doesn't, it does not work like that. It simply Long doesn't work like that. Longstaff did say he might have a drink. Oh that mate, night. they, they so put in the most <laughs> unbelievable shift. Uh, their, their work rate was unbelievable. I'm not a yeah. fan of Anthony Gordon, yeah, but his yeah. work rate down the left was unreal. unbelievable. 
MBK. Um, uh, Hammers win. Suchek. Hammers win. Suchek against won. Newcastle. Wow. Yeah. I'm going for a draw in that one. I, I think there'll be a come down, but I think I think Newcastle won't lose. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Am I the only one to go for Newcastle? Go on Newcastle. Yeah. Yeah. How good Jeez, is Bruno? Man. By get on, the, mate. Get on the Newcastle hype train, man. They're, they're, they're you so ran the show good. yesterday, man. He's so imagine, good. Imagine running the show with Mbappe on the pitch, man. Mm. Bro, he, he's <laughs> ridiculous, man. Yeah. He, he's unbelievably good. I watch him every single time and think. Bruno G. Oh, yeah. That's your oh, shout out. Player, right? oh, yeah, I'm yeah. going to give and a the, shout out the, as new, well. the amount of times the Newcastle fans are going, yeah. Bruno, Bruno, Bruno. It, yeah. It's completely reflective of his performance every yeah. single time. Yeah. yeah. Massive, massive shout out as well to Miggy Almiron. Like, yeah. 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 Very yeah. good oh, game man. yesterday. Yeah. Some um, comeback from that guy because oh, he was a stink for Newcastle until last season. How many, how many players are really Newcastle on the same boat with that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Linton was one team. Like yeah, 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 like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's go Wolves versus Aston Villa. Also a 2 p.m. A lot of 2 p.m.s. Full 2 p.m. Derby day. Three. Uh, Wolves versus yeah. Aston Villa. Yeah, yeah. yeah. HSC, what are you saying on this one? Uh, I. Ooh, difficult. Difficult. I'm going to give it a draw. I don't. I, I Villa. I think are the better side think without about a doubt. Villa are, doing at the Villa are a brilliant team, but they're they're not that consistent at the moment. Mm. I don't see a whole lot of consistency from them. Mate, they've only lost to Liverpool and Newcastle so far this season, and they're on fifteen points, fifth place in the table. Three points behind okay. Man City. Derby Day. I, 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 all I can think right now is Pedro Neto. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, and I think that he's an issue, and I think that Matty Cash will be the same. <laughs> you know, Matty Cash, serious player. I think that this week he'll be thinking quite a lot about Pedro Neto. Fair. Louis T. And you go Villa win. Villa win. Camers Lee. Villa win for me. MBK. Villa win. I'm going to go Villa win as well. Nice one, lads. <laughs> <laughs> and now the big one. Arsenal versus City. Potentially Bakaya Saka out after the Champions League game on Wednesday, Tuesday, whatever it was. Saka seems to have picked up a muscle injury. That's what Arteta's saying. So, Saka out, not Tetra sure about Martinelli. Though. Seems like Martinelli may be out as well. So, Arsenal probably lacking pace on the wings. Rice and Partey are back. Trossard's back. But our attacking threat doesn't look that amazing. City missing Rodri because of the suspension. And De Bruyne out from injury. Key, key missing players. Camersley, what are you saying about this one? This is a real tough one, Fred. And um, after going back and forth with it, I've decided to go with my heart and not my head on this one, actually. And I'm going for a Gunners win. Go on, City. Open the door for us, boys. Come on, boys. Come on, Arsenal. <laughs> the guy lost his head, mate. He's supporting <laughs> Arsenal. He's all over the shot. The guy's lost his head. All over. Come on, uh, the MBK, Come on the what are you saying about this one? Um, I think Ben White's going to have a stinker. I think, <laughs> I think Doku's going to have him on toast. Another serious talent, by the way. Serious oh baller. Yeah, it looks good. Uh, uh, yeah, I think Doc is going to be the main man on the pitch on Sunday and I reckon City grab the win. HFC. City win, nothing new. <laughs> Arsenal, <laughs> wow. Arsenal can't handle the light wow. blue. Wow, Louis T. Is Saka confirmed injured for this game? He's not confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you've like that's going to be my I'm going to yeah. I'm going to back Arsenal to win. Yeah. But if Saka and Martinelli are both winning, mm. I go in with a very very small amount of confidence on that prediction. If Saka so, if Saka and Martinelli both start, I think we'll win. If they don't and then we won't win, we'll lose. Because yeah. if you're, if you're, uh, so, I, are you going? Uh, are you going? Oh, that's, yeah. not, that's not the point of this game, by the way. Yeah. Well, I don't know. It's so, it's so hard to. I don't even know what the team's going to be. Like, yeah. I, I, I could change my mind. I could say right now, like from from our current situation, it looks like Saka and Martinelli are going to be out. I'm going to say we're going to lose. Okay, so that's your prediction. Yeah, then, we're going to lose. You're going to predict Arsenal yeah, to lose. We're gonna lose. Fair enough, and it's not a wild prediction. You yeah. with me, Fred? Um, yeah, I'm with you, mate. Yeah, Come on, fella. Yeah. Awesome. Good luck with Do us a favour, mate. Do us a favour. I want to see if Saka and Martinelli are out. <laughs> Good then Good luck with that. I really That's don't it. believe in that prediction, but I've got to do it. Let's go on from the picks then, and let's finish this whole show off with a little game of Guess the Career Path. Yeah, We're going to find out who has the best ball knowledge here. Mm. And I'm going to say some teams' names okay, to well. you guys. Well. And oh, it's, it's going to be in the, in the order of what teams they've gone through in their career. And you need to buzz in. Whoever's the first buzz in gets to say it. Don't say it before you've buzzed in and I've said who's who's the one that buzzed it in first, yeah? You can buzz in at any point <laughs> yeah. in the listing, right. but if you buzz in and you get it wrong, you're frozen out. First one, Bayern Munich 2. Bayern Munich, FC Augsburg on loan, Schalke, 
on loan. Southampton, Tottenham Hotspur. Hoiberg. Oh, it's a gift. It's a gift. It's one a gift. nil up. One nil up. It's a gift. One nil up. We'll take those. We'll take those. It's a gift. Next one. Brighton Hove Albion. Newport County on loan. Peterborough United on loan. Leeds United on loan. Arsenal. Ben White. Oh, <laughs> you oh, missed it. Me. How did you miss it? <laughs> You should have had it in Newport oh, County, man. I don't fucking go That's back on these shocker. players. <laughs> That's a shocker when, when from you. For the wow. That's a shocker from That's you, man. That's two for Cam. That, yeah, Cam is tuning oh, up. the ball knowledge, boys. All right. Liefering. Red Bull Salzburg. Oh, no. Um, Haaland. No, you're frozen Fuck. out. Damn. Get out of here, man. Someone else is going to get the point here. RB Leipzig. So, Liefering, Red Bull Salzburg, RB Leipzig, Liverpool. Dominic Schubberstein. He's got it. Oh, go oh, 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 I got nervous. I, got nervous. I, didn't want, I didn't want to go for a name. And <laughs> be wrong. To Liverpool, and in that, uh, I was buying some time and MBK uh, snapped that up. <laughs> so, 2 1 0 0. Ah. Vastaras SK. Benfica B. Benfica. Manchester United. Bruno Fernandes. No, oh, no, fuck. That is wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. Manchester United. It's, it's wrong. Is that, is that it? Vast, it yeah. Vastaras SK. Vostras SK. Benfica B. Benfica. Manchester United. Uh, Lindelof. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I needed you to get you that. You were going to get it wrong. <laughs> I was about to go Bebe. <laughs> if, each had, if, if you hadn't noticed, each one of you had one from your club there. Yeah. <laughs> and HFC and Louis T are still sitting on zero points. So, oh, um, the I'm next one. I've been whacked in the same boat as this guy. The next so. one is 2-2. Two, two. This could be the decider. I'll decide. We'll see. No. Mets. Monaco. Arsenal. Oh, fuck. I went too early. I'm going to say... Uh... Oh, fuck. It's wrong. Lacazette. Pop. No, no, it's wrong. It's not. Giroud? No. No, no, no. You don't need to answer now. I've still got way more. Yeah, okay. so it's me and MBK. Oh, it's me and you. Mets, Monaco, Arsenal. Manchester City. Real Madrid online. Tottenham Hotspur online. Tottenham Hotspur. Oh, I know it. Crystal Palace, oh, Istanbul, Basakish, Sahir, Kaya Sarasapur, Olympia, Samasi. I'll go through them again. Look, no, no, Tell us again. Mets, Monaco, Arsenal, Manchester City. <laughs> Bakary Sanya. No, no. no. Oh, I know MBK is the only one. MBK, Hold on. MBK you have to say it by the end of the season, otherwise everyone else oh, is. Oh, no. All right. no. So, no. I picked the wrong guy. Mets, yeah. Monaco, so Arsenal, Manchester City, Real Madrid on loan, Tottenham Hotspur on loan, Tottenham Hotspur permanently, Crystal Palace, Istanbul, Basakashir, oh, no, I flopped it. K, K, Seri, Spor, Olympia, Semasi. Oh, my fucking hell. Three. Think about Arsenal. Well, yeah, no, yeah. Uh, uh, think about the player that's played for three clubs in the Premier League. Girl Clichy. No. Alvaro! Oh, Come on! Are you? I'll, I'll give Camers Lee the win there. Actually, you know what? No, 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 no. You know what? No, 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 Especially, I thought you would have got that with yeah. the Arsenal. I see, literally, as soon as you said, as soon as you said after Monaco, and then you, Arsenal, oh, I said you said, you said, you said All right, we're going to do one more early. as a decider oh, yeah. so between Cameron Lee yeah. and so MBK. Right. Oh my god! Wait, Paris Saint Germain B. Paris Saint Germain. Crotone on loan. Bayer Leverkusen. Aston Villa. Is that it? Is that it? Yeah. He retired at Aston Villa. No, it's not necessarily retired. Oh. Look, I did. No. Ah, fuck. Who? Can you who say who went from Bayer Leverkusen to Aston Villa? 
Oh, you idiot! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! If he gets it wrong, can I say it? Everyone just, everyone just stop speaking. I just need a second to think. got it. HSC got it. Let's keep the game coming. Let's keep the game coming. Let's do one more. It's a comeback zone. The comeback's on. Get the ball. Get the ball. We've got to get one more. That I'm going to decide. Okay, I've got one. I thought we were out of the game, so I didn't go there. I knew it was we're going to find it. Oh, oh, as in, oh, oh, I didn't go. I didn't go. <laughs> no, no, let's do it, let's do this John Ajax. Heren Veen on loan. Yeah. Lille. Newcastle United. Botman. Yeah! <laughs> HSC's won it! Wow. HSC's won it! Absolutely well for done. the lad. Cool. Oh, don't right, let me, don't right, let me right, bag right, a hat right, Don't let, let me bag a hat Let me think of someone. <laughs> let me think of someone. Right. Final decider. Ajax. Inter Milan. Arsenal. That's a tough one, that really. How can we call and that? that? And at the end of his career, LT's not even in the game as well. Oh, wait a second. Huh? Dennis Bergkamp? Yep. Yeah. Oh, Dennis Bergkamp? No, 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 no. Dennis Bergkamp. Dennis Bergkamp. Yeah, it was Dennis Bergkamp. Dennis Bergkamp. You're not, you're not gonna oh, win. Oh, Louis oh, T got a point. Louis yeah. T got a oh, point. I was just about to take the dub there. I got a point. I get a point. This is this is for the win. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 This is for the win. Yeah. yeah. This is for the win. Unless you're LT. Liverpool. Real Madrid. Newcastle. Michael Owen. It's VAR, that is really. That is a mad it was, VAR. It was, it was him first. It was him first. It was his buzz first. Yeah. He said it yeah, before I, I. Oh my he God. He did, but it was it's his buzz first. I heard voice. mine go before his went. It's an but yours finished shambles. at the end. Yours finished after his as well. So it, it, his, his one is. Uh, this is the Spurs all over again, again, man. Let's again. Three, two, one. Oh, Mine still man. goes on ladies. Hey, hey, hey. Man, man, I told you man. lads, I told you lads. Man, man, man. man. We st- right, it's the final final decider between oh Cameras Lee and HFC. Clash, clash, clash. Let's go. This no, is, no, this square, is <laughs> what a game. <laughs> this has gone mental, mate. Alright. Leicester City. Everton. Gary Lineker. Yes! He's well got it. And that's well super played. early. The next that was Barca. Very early. early. I didn't that even need the Barca. I didn't need the Barca. Gary Lineker, where the hell does that come from? Everton's on the Thank you. Thank you. Wins the game. That's an unbelievable effort from you, lad. Unbelievable effort. And that wraps up the show for today. HFC wins a pint at the pub. And he goes into the weekend feeling like a winner. Please like the video. Subscribe to the channel. And we will see you next week. See you then.